Welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, let's take a close look at the difference between counting and estimating. Right over here, I've got a huge, huge flock of coots that have come out of a nearby local park pond to feed on the grass. There's also one brant, kind of a goose, in the middle of the flock. So I can easily count there's one brant out there. And then there's a lot of coots. So let's see how many there are. All right, let's see how this goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to count all those coots. So there's, all right, over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wait, have I counted that one before? Um, okay, we'll just start again. All right, let's try again. All right, oh, actually, a couple more coming in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I think I've got that guy before. No, no, wait, there's a cut. Kind of... You see the problem? With a big flock like this, counting is really impractical. And in addition to that, it really doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter. Let's say there are 532 coots out here. What I want to do is get a general number of about how many coots are out here. The fact that there are 532, that's not going to really make a difference. So I have to figure out a way of how do I approximate, how do I estimate groups of animals, groups of berries on a bush. I want to learn to estimate things so I can continue to put numbers in my journal, but not get bogged down with one, two, three, four, five, when that level of detail doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different strategies and ways to think about numbers. Let me show you one of my favorite estimation techniques. So instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, counting each one of these as a little individual, I'm gonna do something called group estimation. And the way this works is I look out at the flock and I first I'm going to count, I'm going to count 10 of these. I'm going to go, all right, here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I see what 10 actually looks like. With a flock this big, I'm not going to be counting here's 10, here's 20, here's 30. It's going to be way too slow. And I'm going to get even my groups of 10 confused with each other. So instead what I do is I'm going to look out here, I'm going to go here's 10, then we go, there's 20, 30, 40, 50. And I'm going to hold my hands up. And I'm going to capture in my hands, this is 50 coots. So I'm looking out here. Okay, for me, that's 50. So if that's 50, then I'm going to count by 50s, right? So 50, here's 100. So now looking at this is 100. There's 150. There's 200. There's 250. There's 300. 350. 400. 450, 500. 650. So I'm getting, guessing about 600 coots in this flock. So what I did is I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I got a group of 10. And then I went 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then I went 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. And I added up all these other groups of 50. Now here, because I'm looking kind of on the side of these, um, my estimation may not be that accurate. I'm going to try from a different um, angle and see if I get a different number. But my first estimation is 600. Now I want to tell you about an interesting thing that happens in our brain. If the first time I get 600, if I say, to, if I kind of get personally invested with that and say like, there's 600 here, then the next time I count, I'm going to get a number that's really close to 600. Not because there is necessarily 600 here, but because in my brain, I don't want to have to have been wrong. So on my next count, I have to be totally open to getting a different number. So my first count on these, my first kind of run through, I got 600. Now I'm going to move to a slightly different place. I'm going to do my little estimate again. 
And if I get a different number, I'm not going to, I'm not going to force it to be right there at 600. This is what's called the anchoring effect. So if my first, first thing is 600, or if you're with a few other people and a person says, well, it looks like that there's 600 coots out there, then you're like, oh my gosh, there's 600 coots. And then we count them, you'll get 600 too. So beware of anchoring. And now I'm going to go out here. I'm going to get a slightly different angle on these. I'm going to group count them again. And it'll be interesting to see if my second number kind of comes in close with my first estimate. So now I'm at a different location on the flock and I'm going to do a second count. And I just want to be careful of not anchoring myself on the fact that the last time I got 600. Let's see what happens. So this is actually a better angle on the flock. Before I was at the end of a flock looking along them. Now I'm in the middle kind of looking out through the middle of them. So this, this count I think will be a little bit more accurate. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10. That's 20, 30, 40. Okay, so 50 coots is about that much. So if that's 50, that's 100. 150, 200. 250. 300, 350, it's about 400 coots, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650. Well, it came up pretty close. This time I got 650 coots. Um, so that gives me yeah, some confidence that somewhere in there with a little bit of wiggle room is going to be my number of coots. Now, if I'm estimating these as between 600 and 650 coots, I can write down in my notes 600 to 650 coots. So I don't have to put in a specific number. Um, and it's actually better if I put in that range that says, like, I think there's about this many. Another thing I want to be careful of is that, let's say I think there's 650 coots here, and then five more walks up, walk up. I don't want to say, oh, there's 655 coots, because that is so on the nose, right, that it sounds like I went there and I counted all of them. I don't have that level of precision in my estimate. So because I'm counting by 50 and then five more walk up, I'm not going to include those in my count. If 50 more walk up, I'm going to include that in my count. So when I'm writing my numbers, when I'm writing my estimates in my journal, the numbers that I'm going to write are going to reflect the level of precision that I have with my estimates. So again, if I'm counting by 100s, I'm going to be writing my numbers in hundreds and then not adding on an extra 17. Your nature journaling challenge this week is to intentionally use estimates in your journal. Look around your environment and see things that, that you can count and that you can estimate. If there are smaller numbers of things, get in there and count them. So looking out here at this flock, actually uh, you might be able to see it right on the video right about there. There is one, there's one critter who's larger than all the rest. All right? That's my brant my brant goose, and I've got one brant goose, I can count that. I have a big flock, ooh, what's going on? Whew, what are they up to? So something's going on. Is there, oh, red tail hawk, red tail hawk, red tail hawk a flying by. Can you see that? Red tail hawk. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Got to be careful out here. Um, so for this, this flock of, of coots, I want to get in there and estimate. And so look around your environment and see what you can estimate. And so this could be numbers of berries on a bush. It could be birds in a flock. Um, it can be um, patches of lichen on a boulder. The things that are too big for you to count, that's where the estimation comes in. And it allows us to still use numbers in our journal even when the numbers are too big to get in there and count. Give this a try in your journal. 
and you're going to see that you start to see numbers in different ways. There's another advantage of this, is that your intuitive sense of what large numbers look like is going to start to get better and better and better. So when I first look out at these birds, all right, I don't have a sense of like, what, what should a flock of 500 or 600 birds look like? All right. I now have a much better sense of that just by doing this little study out here. And, and you can do the same thing. Um, so you're going to find when you start doing this, you roll up to a flock and just say like, it's a lot of birds. But after you do this for a while, you'll walk up and say like, eh, that looks like about 500, right? And then you'll get in there and you'll group count them and you go like, yeah, you know what? I'm getting better at this. So you're getting, you're going, your accuracy is going to improve and your ability, your, your precision is going to improve. And it's a skill, you can get better and better at it, and it just allows us to use numbers in a much more interesting way. Let's see what happens this week when you play with this. Until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. <laughs>